What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Rick Dion. You're tuning in to my episode number two of my European Doberman vlog. This episode is a little different from my first one. I was just kind of introducing my boy, Jack. But now I'm going to kind of give you guys an insider on what I went through when getting Jack here to the States. That's right. I'm going to share my experience on how to import a European Doberman. Stay tuned. By the time you go pick up your dog, you should have already discussed with your breeder or your broker where the dog should be picked up, the time and the date of when the dog should arrive. Once all of that is taken care of and confirmed, you'll then go down to the cargo shipping area, grab the necessary paperwork sent over with the dog. Um, it'll be attached to the dog's cargo, I believe. You'll then take that paperwork over to U.S. Borders Custom and Protection um, to have the paperwork verified and vilified and have you verified and vilified um, and make sure that everything is squared away. From there, you'll then go back to the cargo company and you'll present the paperwork from U.S. Borders and Customs saying you're verified and vilified. Um, they'll then go ahead and release the dog onto you. That wasn't that smooth for me. The dog landed at 2.30 in the afternoon. I was instructed by the cargo company that live animals, live shipments were their first priority of the day and that I would not have to wait for long. Well, let's fast forward five hours later is now, well, four hours later is now six, around 6.11 I believe I say in the camera. I still don't have my boy. He's still in the crate. He's still not in my arms. And then I get to back to the company and telling me to wait due to COVID, social distancing, and I get it. But nonetheless, I was instructed that I was the only live animal import of the day and that live impact, um, animal imports were their first priority. But here it is four hours later, and yet my boy is still in his crate. So after a little hell was raised and a little finessing, I was able to contact the manager of the facility who then apologized for the inconvenience and released my dog onto me. Don't expect the process to be smooth. Uh, actually have no expectation at all. <laughs> Just go there with the best intentions and uh, walk out of there with the ultimate goal at hand is that's getting the dog. Everything in between is gonna be a bunch of static and honestly, it's out of your control, but hopefully this will help you guys give you a little insight on how it is to import a dog. All right, so we are here at the LAX Custom and Border Protection Office to get the paperwork for Jacques approved by the U.S. Custom Border people and. Uh, they're not too inclined to help us. They're uh, moving at a very uh, county office pace. But uh, nonetheless, I guess it's part of the process when importing a dog from out of the country. We had to go to this off-site cargo uh, shipment area that wasn't on the airport. We then have to come here to US Customs and Borders Protection to get the dog cleared through the broker. And we're back to the uh, cargo area where they can then release the dog to us. This is probably the longest part. All right, so the paperwork is in, got that stamp, and we finna go get Jacques. He's been, a, he's been landed since 2.30 and it's 6.11. And they told us getting dogs was their first priority. And I'm the only dog uh, import for the day here at LAX. So I don't know why it's taking them this long, but nonetheless, we are on our way to go get our boy. Stay All right, it's that time. He about to get delivered. They about to bring him out right now. You excited? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we about to get our boy. I had to call in the manager because they wasn't getting my boy out. He been in that crate for four hours. So it's finally time. So y'all stay tuned. Yeah. There he is coming. Oh, that's 
Hey man, yeah, yeah man, what are you doing? You ready? You tired? 